So are we good, yeah? Thanks okay. for having me on, man. What inspired you to get me on? Um, bro. Well, let me about. introduce you first. Let me do the. the, the <laughs> he was talking. He was talking about right, for the for the because we have um we have a little following on Spotify. This is where it lives. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. So for the people that's listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, we currently are sitting next to Mr. Jazz Rose, uh, financial uh, freedom coach, uh, mentor, money mentor. Um, yeah, he's in the building with us today. Uh, we're, it's a pleasure to have you. Some gems are coming. You know what I mean? It's a pleasure to have you. Um, reason being, why I wanted to get you in today was because right now the markets are in a frenzy. There's a lot of hysteria in uh, almost every industry. Inflation, cost of living's going up. Um, people are really fearful, and you're pushing like double down invest triple and double your income and it's like this is kind of going against the grain right now because everyone's trying to tighten their yeah, belts yeah. and not double up do you yeah. get what i'm saying so before we get into what's going on in the world and whatnot just tell us um how you started this journey where it started for you and how you got into this kind of financial planning thing Sure, man. So I started my first business when I was 17 <coughs> doing um, creative education in schools. And I thought that was my path to financial freedom and financial success. And that didn't quite work out for me because, well, it didn't work. It did work out. I sort of turned it from 30 pounds a week into 3 million revenue a year by the time I was 27. But I suppose the big challenge was when I hit that point, I was like, all right, well, I'll grow it now. I'll get a bigger team and I will sort of take a back seat, right? So I got a bigger team and um, a couple of years in, I got a call from my chief financial officer. She said, we can't make payroll. And I was like, mad, yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine the sweat and tears and struggles that I had to go through to rebuttal that process and mm -hmm. to get through that. Um, and then through that process, I learned an incredible lot about personal finance and wealth because I had always been taught that essentially, like you build a business, you let the business work for you and that's it, right? Yeah, yeah. The more people you have in your business, the easier it becomes. Yeah. But actually it was the reverse. So the bigger it, the bigger it got, the harder it got to run, mm. right? So, and actually you want to make sure that you're building a business that works for you rather than a business that you work for. And although I was detached from it quite a lot, like in terms of my time, my energy was still there. Yeah. So then, I thought to myself, you know what, I've been spending a lot of time learning about business and growing a business, which has been really phenomenal for me. But here's the thing, now I need to learn about what I've actually built the business for, which is financial freedom. So I went really deep into learning about that sort of stuff. Um, ended up selling the business in 2020, which was uh, really good, like real like switch and relief for me. But before I sold the business, I became financially free. Yeah. And that was the shift for me because it gave me the confidence to actually sell the business um, and it gave me the confidence to actually do the things that I want to do and gave me the clarity the peace of mind and the energy just to live my life abundantly on my terms and not on somebody else's um, and that was the shift for me so that's what happened and then once I um, once I started talking about it on Instagram because I was always scared to talk about personal finance on social media and stuff because yeah. I was like CEO of a relatively large organization where well, schools, right? And they're like, yeah. tighten your belts, don't spend any <laughs> money, don't talk about money. Yeah. So um, once I was sort of, once I sort of got clear of that, once I got financially free, I was like, I'm talking about it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and um, people were like, Jazz, you need to run a course, you need to run a program, you need to like teach us more. So then um, my friend Laura was like, yeah, let's put a course together. So I was like, all right, cool, we'll do it together. And then she pulled out <laughs> and then I was like, all right, cool. I'm She's like, but you can do it. You're on your own. So then I started like, you know, building more stories, building more content, did the first program um, on the first program was October 2020. And um, this is lockdown, right? This is yeah, lockdown. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, was, I, was on, I was on Zoom with like 30 people loving it. And then a week later, like it was done live, right? The second week, someone came in. Jazz, I did what you said and I made 30 grand last week. Mad. In a week? In a week. Jesus Christ. I was like, whoa. <laughs> and then like next week, someone else came back. Jazz, I went into my boss, had a conversation. Like you said, have a clear clarity conversation. And my salary has gone up from 32 to, to 52. Man. And then that continues. She's, she's now hit 65 grand in her job from 35 grand. 
and now she's scaled her business past 100 grand a year. She's smashing it. She's left her job, and now she's building yeah, her business to become yeah. financially free. So you've like, seen it was mentoring. working. She was messaging me yesterday. I was like, you need to book a mentoring session with me. Let me show you how to scale your business from 100 grand a year Millions. to 100 grand a month. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sick. Yeah. That's, no, that's good. You know, you said something, sorry, you said something about um, making a business not work for the business, making the business work for you. I That's see a lot of people say like, oh, I want to have this amount of money. Did you ever think of it that way or was it more, I want to live a certain life? Did you have a number? Because I, I saw something online where it was kind of basically saying when you try to just aim for a number, it beca can become a hindrance. I don't know mm. if you ever thought about that. Like saying, oh, I want to be a millionaire, for example. Mm. Is it more so I want to live, like you said, financially free and do holiday A, B and C on my terms mm. and then chase that rather than chase the number. Because if you don't hit that number, mm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not a millionaire, well, but you always feel like, oh, I'm, I'm short. Well, I suppose that like a common misconception um, around millionaires is that you need to earn a million pounds a year in revenue. You don't. What you need to do is you need to think about what is your freedom number, which is like how much do you spend a year? Yeah. Multiply that by 25. Once you hit that number, you're, you're clear. Mm. You're Makes clear sense. because then your assets will always pay for your liabilities, yeah. providing you don't go crazy. And, and yes, there are fluctuations course, in terms yeah. of what you spend and stuff, but it's a good baseline to get to that point and then like really start to readjust from there. Fair, fair. Makes I wanted sense. to um, ask you, because you talked about like the courses, yeah? I'm sure all of us sitting here now and like, the people watching or listening, they would have come across like maybe them scams. adverts, scams <laughs> online. Oh, buy my course. <laughs> You're going to make a million pounds remember them next AC, week. Remember them ACN things yeah. in college? Bare things, oh, there was this thing where we need to sell a drink. Right, what was it? Buy something and you sell it or electric to your family. Bro. Oh, like, that ACN thing. There's been peak. so many. Pyramid yeah, schemes, pyramid schemes. Pyramid schemes. There's been so many like of these so-called we could call it hustles in it yeah like and like someone's making money from them though. financial gurus property gurus stock market gurus online fx gurus yeah, coming trading. in and saying yeah like just buy my course and like you're gonna be a millionaire next week like what <laughs> do you think about these kind of get rich quick schemes and how do you would you say kind of like differentiate your say differentiate yourself like from the mass adverts and campaigns that people got going on with these kind of get rich quick scheme things yeah um there's a few things on that really um because i suppose it's a little bit about like language when we talk about get rich quick schemes right because mm. like yes there's a lot of negativity out there and a lot of foolish people doing a lot of foolish things i just think that we should look at our language a little bit and not call it a get rich quick, quick scheme, scheme because yeah. then everybody's afraid of getting rich quick yeah which in essence that's what you want to do <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you want to get I rich as fast that. as possible, possible. right that. but you don't want you want to do it in the right way you want to yeah, do it yeah. in a way that is steady in a way that is progressive over time right um so i suppose the difference with me well not the difference but the thing that makes me absolutely brilliant at what i do is that i spent 17 years running effectively an education business I wrote books on teaching, I wrote curriculums for schools and leadership and all of that sort of stuff. So I really know how to deliver a message yeah. in a way that connects with my audience. 100%. Um, so I've been really effective at that. And the second thing is I really know my stuff when it comes yeah. to personal finance, property, wealth. And this is not stuff that I've just read, this is stuff that I've actually lived through. Yeah. So every part of that financial freedom journey, every part of that, you know, that pathway to becoming financially free, that pathway to becoming a millionaire, I've done it. I've, I've I've built several businesses, so I know that the, the nooks and crannies that people are going to go through that they need to avoid, and I know how to accelerate them yeah. from where they are to where they want to be. I was mentoring this girl um, three weeks ago now, um, and she she said, "Jazz, listen, I'm like hit a ceiling, I'm doing like ten grand a month at the moment. She's doing like Amazon FBA." I said, "All right, cool, let's turn that into ten grand a week," and I said it like. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's do it over time. She booked in six sessions with me. She messaged me two weeks later and sent me a screenshot. 9.2 thousand in a week. Mm. And I was like, sick. Yeah, she mm. did smashed it. And I suppose that's, um, that's not for me to brag, but like, I suppose the essence of that is that so many of us underestimate our skills. Yeah, 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 yeah. So even as someone that's done this several times for several people, like, I didn't expect it to happen course, in two yeah, weeks. So yeah, yeah. To, to, to a certain extent, I underestimated course, my course, skills course, in that course. situation. Do you know what I'm saying? And like, I don't 
promise a certain result within a certain time, I say I will show you the skills to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds it's up to you to apply yourself. Sounds dumb, but it's like a football coach thinking he's sick and then when the team actually wins, you actually say like, right, oh, yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am yeah. sick because I know what I'm doing now. So you, even though you, like you said, believe in yourself, you still have to, like you said, if you see your pupils, whatever you call them, doing well, it kind of, like you said, reassures you and goes, yeah, actually, yeah. I know, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm helping. Stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. helping out here. Yeah. But you see right now the Instagram hacking? Just getting silly, it's getting silly, it's getting silly, it's getting silly, it's getting silly. And you know what's funny? People ain't getting hacked, I clocked. I saw a tweet and it's true. What? People are trying to flip money quickly. Oh, yeah, They're not yeah, getting yeah. hacked. Yeah, like, yeah, of course yeah. you're getting hacked in the end, but you're only yeah. getting hacked because you're open to think you could turn 500 Gullible. into five bags for yeah. doing this little questionnaire thing in yeah, two yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, well, you're an idiot. Yeah, there is you're an idiot. Is you're an idiot. <laughs> you're an idiot. You wanted to try and make quick money. You're the idiot. Yeah. About I got hacked and then they have a video. Nah, that's the part that gets me. They got a video saying, oh, I just turned two, 200 pound into two grand. If you message me, I can make it happen as well. <laughs> Said, yeah, man. Oh, it's so crazy out here right you're now, finished, man. man. You're finished. It's so crazy. What, what you want to do is you want to you want to flip that on its head and you want to make money quick, ethically, yeah, and in a yeah, way that's yeah. structured and strategic and thought through, rather than oh, I just put it here and then it just came. Back. Be, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not how it's money mad. works. And when you understand how money works, you suppose you don't make those sorts of mistakes. Because what's mm. mad about them Instagram things? Someone's making money from them. Mm. Of course. That's why it's scary. Because mm. like. Someone's making money. It's just not the the floor <laughs> level that we're seeing with all these people saying turn this into that. But people that actually running them accounts and hacking and doing all of that, they're actually making money, which is kind of yeah. kind of scary. Well, they know Still, what they're doing as well. Yeah, they're it? doing a the mad thing. They're doing a the mad thing. But like I just said, you gotta be gotta be smart with it, man. It's not it's not a sprint in it. It's a, sometimes a marathon. You gotta be steady. Still mm. be steady. Don't look for that quick thing, man. Because you chase it it's, it's long for you mm. it's long don't, for you don't chase, us, don't chase yeah. success man attract it yeah yeah, yeah. that's I a good that. point still jazz talk about um obviously the start of my career yeah i think kai you was in a supermarket innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah i was Read, in what are you talking about first first ever yeah, job yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. early doors stacking shelves early doors yeah i was as well in home base um when you come across like let's talk to the people like you said at ground level in it so this person is working I don't know, in a supermarket or home base or wherever, and they come across your page. How does this person, yeah, because I'm sure it's happened before. You just feel it's unattainable, isn't it? Yeah, you, you're, you're working in a, in a nine to five or you're working like seven days a week around the clock. You work in a supermarket or McDonald's or home base or wherever it may be. And uh, you want to you wanna build wealth. You want to get your foot on the property ladder, but you just don't, you don't have the know-how and you don't know who. You don't have the money sometimes. You know what I'm saying? What you're getting in is just going straight back out. <laughs> or what, what you think anyway, you think. Where does that person start? The person that works in home base or in the supermarket, where does that person start if someone like that was to come to you and say, listen, I need help? Yeah, sure. I think the first thing that the average person should do well is to really manage what they got. Because so many people have this misconception that, oh, when I make more money, I'll start investing. No, 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 start investing no, now. Yeah. Because as Jim Rohn says, if you if you don't know what to do with a pound and you don't invest 10p out of that every pound, it's all right to invest in 10p, but when you have a million pounds, it's a different conversation yeah, investing yeah, yeah. 100 grand, <laughs> yeah, right? Shoot, so what's shoot, easier, shoot. to invest the 10p that you got or to invest 100 grand? It's a much bigger conversation when it's 100 grand. So you've got to start early, right? And just understand like like wherever you are, like live below, I always say this phrase, right? Live below your means while fulfilling all your dreams, which means be on your purpose, focus on what it is that you want to create in order to grow your income, in order to grow your skills. But once you're doing that, like start investing, start managing your money well, because you have to manage your money in order to grow it, all right? So that's like a starting point. And then the second thing that I would say to encourage that person to do is have a look at their skill sets and how they can double down on those skill sets in order to really start to grow their income and start to think about their income in a different way. One of the ways that I encourage people to think about their income is like in a job, right? Home base, McDonald's, wherever, you're applying how many different skills? Probably about 10, 15 yeah, different skills, true, true. Yeah. right? So what you've got to do is look at all of those skills and go, right, that's a skill, customer service. That's a skill, selling on the phone. That's a skill, dealing with customer complaint. That's a, right? Go through all of those skills and go, actually, how can I make some money from that? Mm, how can I make point. an extra 200 quid from that particular skill? Maybe I can train some customer service advisors. Maybe I can train the team here. Maybe I can scale up where I am. Maybe I can use that skills in a different way and um, 
train other people how to become effective at this. Whilst I'm saying that, there's no substitute for skill, so you've got to get course. good at something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, develop your skills, get good at something, and then start to master it. So I always say, like, create a list, which is to list out all your skills. I is for identify the top three. S is for start working on the top one right away. And then T is to have a time frame that you want to get to Cheap, where you start yeah. making at least a thousand pounds a month from that skill. Mm. And if you think about it, if you do that with three different skills over the course of average person might take one, two, maybe three years, depending on who they are and what they do. You've got an extra three thousand pounds a yeah. month. So you've got to start to think about, okay, so how can I start to start something, put all my energy and effort into something that actually after six, twelve months, it actually performs almost relatively on its own. Yeah. Detach your income from the time. Once you learn to do that, you never run out of currency. I was gonna touch on that. How do you kind of nail that in in regards to once they start making more money, don't spend more money. It sounds silly. Yeah. But once you start hey listen, when I was when I graduated from uni, yeah, finished, I said, Yeah man <laughs> Flex I said, I, yeah, Skills. man, yeah, man, full time job and that now. I said, Raw, it's been a local time since I watched the local Sky Sports. Let me pay for that now. Mm-hmm. And I said, Raw, that was coming out every month. I said, Yo, my people, <laughs> this is kind of expensive. I can see why now. Mm-hmm. I wasn't paying for it before and I was streaming. Mm-hmm. But because I thought, Raw, man, it's gone from, like, but I said, doing the retail while I was at uni to getting the, you know, said whatever it is, 40 hour contract now, you're working five days a week. You just think, right, I'm meant to be making a lot more money. It's mm. maybe triple the income. So I was working mm. part time when I was at uni. But actually, you you work more, so you get more money, but mm. you spend more. So you actually kind of, you know, there's a period, and I feel we all kind of had it, where you're on your feet, you're kind of thinking, right, actually, I can actually go half on Netflix with my brother. Right? It's mm. not much, but that's seven mm-hmm. pounds. Yeah. I can save that. Yeah. Me and my brother go halves. And Netflix yeah. even more expensive now. He actually owes me some money. So if he's watching this, <laughs> we still go halves now. He owes me some right now. But anyway, just little things like that. Yeah. Sky. Yeah. Anything. Anything. You just kind of go, oh, man's making more. Let me spend more. How do you kind of go, listen, yes, you said what they got free, possibly three grand extra a month from mm-hmm. their skill. Why why do they why do they not want to start living lavish? Yeah, one of the <laughs> one, one of the most um one of the most helpful things to me that I created was a tool called a money tracker. And what it helps you to do is to see your proportionality of what percentage of your income is going where. Yeah. And once you can see that and you start to track it every month, you're like, no, 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 that's going too far. But you, it, it's not that you you don't get into that habit yeah, of yeah. spending more money, especially. But what what happens is you're able to catch it a lot quicker. Fair, fair. And even me, like even me where I am, like I'm just able to catch, catch it. it yeah. And you can catch it after you know 30 days or so, rather than catching it after three years. Yeah. And like, oh my goodness, where's all my money gone? Damn, it's <laughs> gone on Sky Sports. It's gone on uh, all these expensive <laughs> no, bills that I created for myself. Yeah. You see, PayPal paying <laughs> free. Yeah, that's a bad. That them paying free, them paying Kalana things. Yeah, they need to block me off all of them. Yeah, forget it. They forget need to it. block me off all of them. Let's if talk about that. If you can't stay pay on it that. now, then they need to block me off stay all on of that, them. Kai. You see, during lockdown, debt consumerism. Aye, like you see, during lockdown, they got me. They got me. That PayPal paying free thing, it got me. Mm. I, I was able to pay it, but I was thinking, right, the next month this is coming out again. Mm-hmm. Nah, this is. You see, when I went to IKEA, yeah, I got to the till. Then I said, you know what? I could buy this online. They had a couple of things that I weren't there. I said, you know, yeah. I'll buy it online because I went to buy it, innit? So I had the money. Well, like, I had less if that makes sense because I was going to buy everything. But you get all these accessories. Let me just long it short. And I was like, you know what? They don't have it in there. Let me buy it online. So I ordered it online now. Then I saw paper paying free. I was like, <laughs> this month, next month and a month after. Yeah. That could kind of work for me. I was going to spend, you know, let's just say 600 pound. Yeah. But, now I've done it online, I'm at like 850, but they're saying I can spend 275 mm. today, mm. 275 next month and 275 the month after. That's how they get you. I said, yeah, that just sounds good to me. But really, it was painful, man. It was painful seeing it just come out my account, knowing that I've got the item here. Mm. I was thinking I might as well just wait an extra month and just got it all for eight. Cause it's, it all hurts the same in yeah. my head, but them things are dangerous still. Because I feel like people spend money they don't have thinking, oh, I'm going to get paid next month. Mm-hmm. Stay on that, that was my set anyway. <laughs> Stay on that. Jazz, what do you think about that? Like consumerism and how like, because these, these companies weren't about before, these Klarna's and yeah. Clearpay's and like pay now mm-hmm. <coughs> or buy it now, pay later. Pay later. What, do you, what do you think about the whole like consumerism and, and whole like debt thing? Yeah, it's, uh, we live in a very consumer-led society and the system is designed to keep you stuck. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the system is designed that way. And once you start to understand that the system is designed that way and the media is the media because the media is designed that way, this is all done by intentional focus and intentional yeah. thought, right? So once you start to understand that, you start to be able to peel away from that because here's the thing, it's like if you do what most people do, you will have what most people have. And if you have the lifestyle that most people have, you will always be average or below. Yeah. So you've got to start to look at things from a different perspective and start to really take control of your own cash, really take control over what you've got. And that's why I think it's so important to, I know like it's like kind of like a glib term in it. Yeah, I'm good at managing money. That's the worst thing that people can say anyway. <laughs> why would you say you're good at managing money? Because here's the thing, you're good at managing money based upon the level that you're at. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And the level that you're at is, by the way, your, 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 your whole relationship to money is defined mostly by the age of eight. So, which means that if your parent, if you didn't grow up in a wealthy family, guess what? You're relatively going to stay at a relatively Makes similar level. level. Yes, yeah. you're making more than your parents made, but guess what? Inflation's kicked you up the bum yeah. sixty times more, or however many times more. And it's like you're always going to stay in a relatively similar position. Yes, you will make advancements and get further ahead, but you want to you want to leverage, you want to soar, and if you want to do that, then you've got to start to. Um, be able to manage money not on the level that you're at, but on the level that you're going towards. Yeah. Because it's like if you look at professional athletes, most people don't know this. Ninety percent of professional athletes outside of the top five percent go broke within five years of retirement. Yeah. Yeah. That's why all their wives leave them. A big man take man saw something like that. Uh -oh. I saw something like that. So when it was like it was it was random. It was on Instagram or Twitter. It was like this footballer that like there was like basically listing like five footballers who were all decent in their day. Divorce. Mm. Yeah, they either overweight and look dusty uh -huh. or divorced. I was thinking, yeah. This and then is, women are getting big settlements on them. This is painful. Money. The lifestyle stopped, and they said, yeah, I'm gone. Crazy. But then, then man, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like because I'm not a footballer, I feel like if I had that type of money. Let's just say an average footballer in the top, like you said, top level, 100 grand a week. Let's just say that number, yeah. I, I feel like it sounds dumb, but mentally I'm like, I can't go broke if I get that for 10 years. But your that's life- they probably say. That, I know, that's what I'm saying. But I understand that your life living is mad. Do you get what I'm yeah. trying to say? I'm not stupid. I know I ain't gonna live where I live right now if I got 100 grand a week. So already <laughs> that's gone up. I'm not stupid, I understand that. But I just feel like when they get to like 40 or 50 and you just see some of them looking rubbed, I'm thinking, how have you got here? But Boy, it can happen to anyone, I guess. My my whole thing is, yeah, because there's a, and let's let's talk about there's there's instances when you look at um I seen like advert I think for Klarna yeah, and uh, people were like leaving reviews and whatnot, and it's 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 kind of good to like read comments and reviews because you know, like what the uh, consensus is on certain things, and a lot of the people under the comments that were leaving comments on the uh, Klarna thing were saying, oh like. I wasn't sure how I was gonna um, buy my kids birthday presents. Oh, yeah, and yeah, this yeah. is like a phenomenal yeah, um, tool. I was able to like get my kids gifts, get my mum a gift and like, I could just pay it later. Like it's so helpful. And it is like, there's, there is positive stories Bro, to come out of like these, yeah, yeah, these, yeah. Um, these websites and whatnot. Obviously there is also negative, but how do you combat, yeah? Like, all right, if I wasn't going to Kalana this, I won't be able to get my kids any presents. Like, mm. do I want to do I, do I want to take the burden of not getting them any presents or do I want to go, you know what? I'm going to Kalana this this time. I'm going to make them happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to put a smile on my face. We're going to have a lovely Christmas and I'm going to try and yeah. pay it later. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> it's like. I don't know. What do you guys think of like the balance between like? Depends what you're buying, man. Obviously, you wanna you wanna get gifts. You wanna you wanna get. I don't know. Maybe you need like the other day, like I smashed my phone in it, mm. and I was like, shit, I need to buy a new phone. But obviously, I had the money to buy a new phone. But some person may not. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they may have to clonder it because they need their phone. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, on one end, it's like I don't want to go into debt or whatever but on the other hand i still want to live life and i still want to you know be happy and mm. do the get the niceties and yeah. do stuff that i enjoy and that yeah. how do you balance that i i balance it i mean i start by saying i balance it by focusing on what we discussed earlier which is scaling up your skills because here's the question right is like what kind of lifestyle do you do you want to do you want to live an average lifestyle now and for the foreseeable future or do you want to 
live okay now and live abundantly in the future. Mm. Can I get that So still? it's like, where's your, where's your focus at? Because whatever you focus on, you can create. I've been saying this before, deferred gratification, bro. Mm. We spoke about that before in the pod. Mm. Remember what I said about the little of the kids um, yeah. of two different backgrounds? I was just touching it for jazz. Basically, there was a study. I'd studied in sociology, but um, we're like middle class or upper class. I think they were white kids compared to lower class kids from, I think it was in America. So I think they was in the projects, yeah. I gave them a marshmallow. I said like, oh, the middle class kids, like, well, said to all of them, wait, and you'll get two later. Mm -hmm. And all of the broke kids basically ate it, or like eight out of 10 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like every single upper class kid, apart from like one, I think, mm. waited and got two later because mm. they understood, like you said, and they were kids, they were like four, but it comes to what you said about your relationship with money by your eight. Mm. At that young age, they realized that it sounds trivial, but like having books in their house compared to like PlayStation. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like we would want a PlayStation for Christmas, whereas they would be like, oh, my dad got me this wavy book at like five <laughs> years old. They're saying like, you don't understand. Like I love this book, like this book and the book is like educational. Yeah. And to them, that's better than a PlayStation. Like you come around with your PlayStation again. They say, oh, forget that, man. Yeah. That don't mean nothing to me. And obviously I saw that myself because I touched on it before, but I went to private school, primary school. So I saw the difference between like my cousins who I love dearly grew up with. We would play PlayStation till 1 a.m. And then my primary school friends, they've got like a, a library in their house. Mm. <laughs> like they they got books and like shelves of books. Like you go to my house or like my cousin, most of my house, my mom kind of learned from my private school friends, but like my cousins, like they ain't got no books and that in their house. Just mm. PlayStation, PlayStation, nothing wrong with that. Like yeah. man enjoyed it. I was over there every weekend. Mm. But <laughs> the difference is it, it, it kind of ingrained from very young mm. what I think we go on to, like you said about what is next for us and do you want to live that life now or what you show now mm. to understand how to break that mold and go through. I suppose a big problem with that is, um, or a big challenge with that, I'll yeah. say, is that most people don't have a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the problem. It's not necessarily using Klarna. Klarna's not, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's people don't think about what they're actually doing. And it's about having a plan because once you have a focused plan, it's like, all right, this is what we're going to do. This is where we're living now. This is where we're going to live in five years. This is the plan to get there. And these are the steps that we're going to take. So then once you have a plan and you stay focused on that plan, there's nothing going to stop you from yeah. becoming a lot more financially fit than where you are today. But if you don't have a plan, you're just going to be like, all right, I'll just do it. I'll just do that. And then that happens is that this becomes a repetitive cycle. Yeah. And then your car goes and then the boiler goes and then something <laughs> else goes. And you're just living in this rat race lifestyle, always trying to keep up with your tail and it never works. Mm. Yeah, that's the peak thing still. When you don't take in consideration that little <laughs> that can unforeseen circumstances hey, you've got a budget for that still <laughs> <trust> you touched <laughs> on something really powerful as well which is that um about like the playstations and all that yeah and i know you spoke about it earlier as well it's like when we talk about oh my kids will be happy if i get them this the thing that kids value the most is not products it's not games kids the thing that kids value the most is time yeah so Sometimes and often as parents, as adults, we buy things for kids or for other people that we think is their mo is like super valuable yeah, to us. Them, yeah. But really we're we're only covering up we're doing that to cover up our own security yeah, insecurities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> rather than actually doing something that's actually going to serve the child in the most powerful way. So again, like Playstations, games, all that that's all good. But like, let's have like a broader context, a broader frame around what we're actually trying to create for our children, because the most powerful thing that they want from us is our time. time. Yeah. I hear that. Like most people school. spend hours away from their children and then try to Just reverse engineer it by yeah. buying them products and go, yeah, I have a PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and, it, and it works for a period of time. But when they hit the 14, 15, 16, and then the, they, the, they don't care the, about the lack of discipline starts yeah, to come yeah. in, all of that sort of stuff, then it gets, then it gets difficult, doesn't it? Mm, it's true still. Jazz, what are some <coughs> habits that you can create to start building wealth? What are some of the habits you need, would you say? Don't have a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> That's number I one. didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the habits you need to start building wealth? Or to get on your uh, financial freedom journey, I should say. Mm. Um, one, you've got to master your money mentality. You've got to understand that and you've got to know where you are with that. Two, you've got to have a clear method, have a clear goal, have a very, very clear focus of where you are now and where it is that you want to go. I spoke about like the freedom number yeah. earlier. Map out a clear route to get there. Three, then you want to maximise. You want to maximise your income and you want to look at different ways that you can do that with your skill sets and where you're at. 
and then you want to make sure that you are managing extremely well so like managing what you have you know I spoke about like if you have a hundred pounds invest like at least 10 pounds of that every yeah. single month you know and just create that as a discipline because that will serve you so so well um it's like if you um someone's on a low salary or whatever and like, i'll never break free of this thing but actually if you invest like 10 percent of your income over 30 years and keep your lifestyle the same you'll be financially free in 30 years yes it's a long time but actually you're financially free by 50 rather than relying on the government at 67 yeah. and that's just like a, a real low level example so you've got to learn to manage your money and then finally you've got to learn to multiply you've got to learn to invest and you've got to make sure that you're investing a portion of your income every single month without fail so that you can learn you see the investment one yeah i'm not going to ask you what do you say to invest in because that obviously everyone's scenario is going to be different but when you say invest do you mean like into something and um, do you get what i mean when i say that mm -hmm. yeah or is it like just hold it <laughs> yeah definitely don't hold it in the bank yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and definitely don't hold it in the bank for too long um you know you want to start to like a real simple way to do it is just to invest in index funds um tend to grow up they tend to grow on average at 10 percent compound interest so that sort of interest people don't realize actually grows at an incredible rate over yeah. time yes it takes time but actually it's a very it's almost like a like a baseline way to become financially free almost because you, you know if you invest 25 percent of your income irrespective of what you're what you're earning you invest 25 percent of your income for 20 years you become financially independent at 10 percent growth rate mm -hmm. so it's just like all right cool well 20 to 40 well sod it then everyone should become financially independent by 40. worst case scenario and that's not even doing anything clever. Yeah, that's yeah. just. But yeah. if you, but people go, I can't invest twenty percent. Well, what happens if the government increases their taxes? You're going to pay it. <laughs> so find why did you pay the government, but you won't pay Yourself, you? Yeah, yeah. It's funny that because as a woman in Sainsbury's, she's been there for like she's still there now because the one I work past, I go past a couple times, and she used to tell me that um, invest in the Sainsbury shares. So I was like, even after that, I was like, shut up, man. <laughs> 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 don't know, like, oh, it's some foolishness, man. Like, don't don't tell me this nonsense. She said, no, obviously, th them times there, I'd be, I was getting six hundred pound a, a month, so I was working two shifts a week. Yeah, so tell about you think I'm putting my some of my six hundred pound back in here? <laughs> <laughs> no chance. And then like, yeah, like just before lockdown, obviously things may have changed, didn't it? She was telling me like, she's been there like coming up to over twenty two or something years old. It's a very long right. time, innit? She's telling me her her pattern. I'm saying, bro. Okay, I understand. Mm. <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's to retire like by 55 or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> like what I said, like she's not, obviously to the naked eye, you think, oh, it's just, cause she never wants to get promoted. She's mm. been there, she's done the same role. She said, mm. I don't want to get promoted. I don't want to go up. I don't want to go down. I just stay where I am. And obviously she's kind of bit the bullet and said, you know what? I've been here ABC amount of years. This is kind of what I'm, where I'm at, whatever reason, but I make it work for me when I get to a certain age. She's like, yeah, I'm just go back to Jamaica usually, and retire. Usually look <laughs> after you when, once you've been there like 15, 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, who wants to be anywhere? Yeah, yeah. But you got to, but that's what he's saying. If if you've come to accept that that's where you're going to be for whatever reason, yeah, yeah. then why not make the most of it? Like she has. She's saying, but by the time she's at least, she said like 55, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna retire. In Jamaica, she come back to Jamaica, she said. She's done. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's about understanding your personality. Yeah. Right? And Some people work here till 70 and kill themselves. Mm. This country ain't good for you as well, blood. So, mm. <laughs> what, what's your what's your future plans, Jazz? Where do you see yourself in the next 10, 15 years? In terms of everything, like where do you see yourself? Where do you <coughs> see? I don't know your business being. Mm. I see myself constantly elevating, man. At the same time, I don't put any pressure on myself. I don't in in that context, like I don't put any pressure on it because I'm, you know perfectly ha it's like being extremely happy where you are but yeah. also constantly progressing constantly growing constantly doing better and my focus and my thing is like how can i add more value to more people you know if i'm able to get these kind of results for jasmine if i'm able to get these kind of results for these people how can i get my message out there to more people yeah. so that i can help more people because i know what i do works and i know that i'm I, i've got the skills to do it so Really, that's fulfillment, really, isn't it? It's yeah, like yeah. when you wake up to messages going, oh, I've done this. Done like, well, yeah, yeah. So for me, it's not necessarily like a particular number or anything like that. It's yeah. like, all right, how can I help more people? So, so is that what gives you the drive still, that motor that people are mm. still, yeah, that's, yeah. that's cool still. Yeah.
Absolutely. It's cold. I know Kai said he weren't going to oh. ask you what to invest in, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> if, no, because it's circumstantial. If someone, it? say like me and Kai, yeah, have a hundred grand each mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. and we come to you and we say, Jazz, I got a hundred K mm -hmm. near mm -hmm. from wherever, made it up wherever, mm -hmm. I got a hundred K, like where is the best place to put this, to have it work for me, to make more um, on the compound interest, whatever. Mm -hmm. Where do I put this hundred grand? Do I split it up or do I put it one place? Like, where do I put it? Great question. Um, and yes, we would need to understand more about your personality, what your goals are, etc. But in, but in short, I'd probably go, all right, let's go to Liverpool. Let's go and buy three houses. Liverpool? Yeah. Packs Why and Liverpool? potions. <laughs> because, <laughs> because Liverpool's been um, on the sort of the, the growing rise for quite some time now. Um, and... I say Liverpool as an example, but there's yeah. other good examples yeah, yeah. as well, whether it be, you know, Nottingham, whether it be uh, Birmingham, whether it be Manchester, and sort of like find those niche areas where you know that the, the value is going to grow up based upon the recent history and the recent trends and stuff, and you know that there's going to be an increase in population in that sort of area, and all of those sorts of trends are happening in the right way. And it's just like, all right, put your money in there and watch it grow. A hundred grand in property in Liverpool. Why not? Because then, then you've got two. Then, then you've got money coming in both ways, right? Yeah. You've got your capital appreciation and you've got your cash flow. See, so you've got right. profit coming in from the rent every single month. All right, let me pose this question then. So, if we like, from what I've seen mm. online, watching certain things, investors will usually say, like, the best thing to do is diversify. Yeah, mm -hmm. the best thing to do is diversify. Oh, is mm. So. <laughs> I've got 100k, yeah. Yo, you don't want to put it all in one thing. We're going to Liverpool, Jazz said, to buy three properties. I right, bet we might make X amount. We might see it grow. But based off what like, like investors would say is diversify, would you, would you still say the 100k all in property mm -hmm. is the best thing to do? Great question. So it depends where you're at, right? We need to have a we need to have a financial baseline first. Yeah, yeah. You need to have your emergency baseline in, in, in place. You need to have um, certain financial security. What is your emergency baseline? Times three of your yeah, salary. Yeah, six months worth yeah, of yeah. expenses. Yeah, yeah. Not your salary, your expenses. Oh, expenses. Yeah, you spend a thousand pounds a month. You only need three to six grand stored somewhere relatively safely that you can access relatively quickly. No shoebox, by the way, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do shoebox, buddy, bro. So you want to have your emergency fund in place and stuff like that. But once, and um, especially like, mo I suppose most of your audience are young, 20s, 30s, right? Then why would you not invest in property? You're active, you're young, you've got the time, the energy to do it. Like go out and grow a property portfolio because I know you said like you might make the money back, but actually if you understand how property works and you invest you with the fundamentals, mm. then your money's gonna grow, you know? And I can, you can just say that with like 98, 99% accuracy, your money's yeah. gonna grow, mm. right? If you invest in the right thing, and you just do the right level of due diligence and stuff, your money's gonna grow, you know? I saw this thing online, this guy bought a house for 46K, I think in, I don't know what area, let me not lie. But anyway, he said like for each bedroom, whatever, 100 pound a week, I think he made it like a five bedroom house or whatever. And then he was just like, the house gonna make him 26 grand a year. I was thinking, bro, he made the money back in two years. Mad. Sick. That's it. <laughs> this HMOs is a no, the thing, man. This is a no brainer. Yeah. <laughs> this is a no brainer. Yeah. Is the thing, man. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, anyone can do it. Like, you say, you bought it for 46 grand. You yeah. can go to places and buy houses yeah, ups, not ups, for, that, for that sort of money. Newcastle and But everyone, places, yeah. everyone wants to go, I want to live in London and I want to buy a share to buy property. Okay. Yeah. And, but you have no plan. Yeah. Right? yeah you yeah, have yeah. no plan for your financial future. You're better off going and doing something like that, investing first getting some passive income and then you're like all right cool i've got a couple of grand a month passive income that's paying for my lifestyle now the job the, the money that's coming in from my job yeah. i can use that to invest i can use that to do other things <laughs>